We talked about amphoteric substances. Water is amphoteric. We saw it act as an acid. We saw it act as a base. So here with ammonia, we see water acting as an acid. It's donating a proton to the base. Here with HCl, the water is acting as a base. And so it can accept a proton from the acid. So that's kind of weird in and of itself. But this is even stranger. You have two water molecules together. One might act as a base and the other act as an acid and form hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And this does not follow most of the patterns of nature where everything is, is wanting to be the same, right? Things are becoming the same. They're not becoming different. We don't have two identical things that suddenly become two different things. What's more normal is for these guys to react to form water. So does this happen very much? No, it doesn't. It's very, very small, but it is important. So water can auto-ionize. It acts as an acid and a base with itself. Pretty weird. So um, here we're looking at the two water molecules. Um, one accepts the acid, one transfers and one accepts. And so we end up with H3O plus and OH minus. If we write this as H plus instead, Um, we're going to get H2O liquid with H plus and OH minus. So we took the water that was holding this hydrogen ion out of the picture. So we took the H2O out of this one and we got rid of one of these. Um, if you remember from Chem 1A, this is the net ionic equation for a lot of acid-base reactions. So if we look at this, we can calculate an equilibrium constant for the auto-ionization of water. It's going to be the hydrogen ion times the hydroxide ions divided by, oh, divided by nothing because this is a liquid. So H plus times OH minus. Or if we're using H3O plus, H3O plus times OH minus. Okay. So this is an equilibrium constant. Um, this is KW, and it's called the ion product constant for water. I'm not going to you know, ask you, well, what's the name of KW? And ask you to come up with ion product constant for water. You need to recognize that KW is an equilibrium constant for water, right? And the only thing water does with itself is auto-ionize. So at 25 degrees Celsius, that equilibrium constant is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. It's pretty small. There's not a lot of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion in the water. It's almost all water molecules. If we have one water molecule, well, that, that gets a little confusing. So if we look at it this way, so we have two water molecules and one acts as an acid and one acts as a base, then we're going to get hydronium and hydroxide. We're going to get equal numbers of these, right? It's always going to be equal because it came from the water. It's a bit like, you know, taking a bunch of shoes. You've got pairs of shoes. And when you separate them, you end up with the same number of left shoes and right shoes. You don't suddenly have 10 more left shoes than right shoes. It doesn't happen. Here, when these auto-ionize, you get an equal number of hydronium and hydroxide ions. So the hydronium ion concentration has to be equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. So we can calculate what that is. It's going to be the square root of Kw or 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. So the H3O plus concentration in pure water is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. 
that is really small, and most of the time we just kind of ignore that. <coughs> um, pure water is not an acid or a base. It's not acidic or basic, I guess I should say. It's considered neutral because the concentrations of H3O plus and OH minus are equal to each other. Any questions? So in a neutral solution, the concentrations of H3O plus and OH minus are equal to each other. In an acidic solution, we're going to have more hydronium ion than hydroxide ion. Because how, do the, how does the solution become acidic? Well, you put an acid in it. And what does the acid do? It donates hydrogens. And the water can accept them, right? So that's going to create H3O plus ions, and these are in addition to the pairs created by separating, I mean, the, the different individual shoes, right, which had to be equal. Now we've added some hydrogen ions. The equilibrium is going to shift, because in this equilibrium, what did we learn happens if you add product? What does it do? It shifts to the left. So as you add hydrogen ions as the acid, it's going to shift this way and use up some of the hydroxide ions. So the hydroxide ion concentration is going to go down. So hydronium ion concentration is going to be greater than hydroxide. In a basic solution, you add additional OH, you get additional OH minus ions, and the equilibrium shifts to the left again. And now we have hydroxide ions greater than hydronium ions. So here we have three solutions, and we're given the hydronium ion concentrations, and we're asked which one of these is acidic. Well, they're not telling us the hydronium and hydroxide. They're just giving us one of those. If it's neutral, the H3O plus is equal to the OH minus, and those are going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. <coughs> so one of these is neutral, right? Which one's neutral? B. An acidic solution is going to have a larger concentration of hydronium ions. So which one's acidic? A. That makes sense? Here we're asked to calculate the hydronium ion concentration for each of these, and then tell if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. So the equation there that we're using is the definition of Kw. So this is an equilibrium calculation. So we're told that the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide is this, and we need to calculate the hydronium ion concentration. <coughs> well, we could plug the number in here and use a solver to solve for x, or we could use a little bit of algebra the hydronium ion concentration is going to be the Kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. So if we take 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and divide by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2, I get 6.667 times 10 to the minus 13. And 
answers. So I'm going to report that answer as 6.7 times 10 to the minus 13 molar. Is that solution acidic, basic, or neutral? It's basic. The concentration of hydroxide is a lot bigger than the hydronium. So this one's basic. What about this guy in the middle? It's neutral. We don't even actually have to do the calculation because this is the concentration of hydroxide ions in pure water. And in pure water, that is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ions. What if you forgot that? Well, you could plug the numbers into this equation and you'd get the correct answer. And then you might say to yourself, oh, sh I should have recognized that, but it's okay. And then this one. So again, we're gonna use this equation. I'm gonna take one times 10 to the minus 14 and divide by 8.2 times 10 to the minus 10. Give me 1.2195, bless you, 10 to the minus 5. And I'm, I'm just following my own advice here of, you know, when I get a calculated number, I'm going to write it down with at least two extra digits, and then I'm going to round it. So we'll call this 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. <coughs> Acidic, basic, or neutral? Acidic. Any questions? These are kind of basic ideas. Basic ideas. Pun intended. Did you have a question? Okay, so I didn't write it out, which was maybe a mistake. So let me get this guy over where there's a little more space. Whoops. So for that first one, what I did is I put in the given hydroxide ion concentration here, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2. So when I take the Kw for water and divide by the hydroxide ion concentration, that gives me the hydronium, okay? Good question, thank you for asking that. Any other questions? So the concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide ions um, cover a huge range. They can mostly go from like one mole per liter to like 10 to the minus 14 moles per liter. So huge range. So the pH scale is a compact way of specifying the acidity. <coughs> so we can specify the acidity without needing scientific notation and all that extra stuff. So pH is defined as the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration. So a solution with a hydronium ion concentration of 5.3 times 10 to the minus 8 molar has a pH of, we're going to use this equation. So the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. And it does have to be the base 10 logarithm. So I would round that to 7.26. So this is a weird thing. 
and I'll show you why it is. But in a logarithm, only the numbers to the right of the decimal point are significant figures. This 0.2757 comes from the 5.3. The number in front of the decimal point is related to this exponent. So if we want to know the pH of a solution that has 5.3 times 10 to the minus 4 molar hydronium ion, that's going to be 3.2757. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's, I wish I could say I did that intentionally. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we're keeping this seven and it rounds up to an eight. Okay, whoops. Eight. So this one is 3.2757. I did not use my calculator. Check it on your calculator. I can't do logarithms in my head, but I know the pattern here. The 2757 is from the 5.3. The number in front is related to this exponent. The number in front of the decimal point is just the power of 10. It's the number after that is where the significant figures are. So this has two significant figures. So then we're going to round our pH to 2 decimal places. I'm not going to try to trick you with that, but just be aware. Any questions? So the pH scale runs from 0 to 14. And a pH of 7 is considered neutral. Well, why is that? Well, when the H3O plus concentration equals 1 times 10 to the minus 7, the negative log of that is 7. Anything less than 7 is considered acidic because there's more hydronium ion than hydroxide ion. Anything greater than 7 is basic. And then there's this little statement down here. Concentrated acid solutions can have negative pH values. So concentrated, um, I think it's sulfuric acid, is 18 molar. And so if we say, okay, well, what if the hydronium ion concentration is 18 moles per liter? The pH is negative log of 18. Which is negative 1.255. Is it common to see negative pH values? No, but they can exist, okay? So if you get a negative pH value, don't freak out. Don't necessarily assume that you did something wrong. So calculate the pH of each solution, indicate whether the solution is acidic or basic. So We'll use the equation, pH is equal to negative log of hydronium ion concentration. So here, the pH will be equal to the negative log of 9.5 times 10 to the minus 9. Eight point zero two 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 eight. 
just write down a couple more digits than you think you should. My, my given number had two sig figs. I want to keep two decimal places in my pH. 8.02. Acidic or basic? Basic because it's greater than seven. We could also identify that by looking at this concentration, right? It's less than 10 to the minus seven. Okay, for this one, we're given a hydroxide ion concentration and told to calculate the pH. But we need the hydronium ion concentration for the pH. So we have to do an extra calculation here. The H3O plus concentration is equal to Kw, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. So first I had to calculate the hydronium ion concentration, and now I can use that to calculate the pH. This is an intermediate value. It's going to be used in a future calculation. We don't want to round it off yet. Getting eleven point eight five one four. How should I report that with two sig figs? Eleven point eight five. Again, I'm not going to try to trick you with that, but you may get, you know, confused when you're doing a problem and mastering chemistry says, no, you need this, and you're like, but, because what's natural to think is that 11.85, the two sig figs would be the 11, but that's the minus 12 part. Any questions? Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to answer that part. Is it acidic or basic? It's basic, because it's greater than 7. Thanks for catching that. <coughs> okay, let's calculate the hydronium ion concentration from the pH. We don't have an equation for that yet. We know that pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. You could use the solver on this. You could plug in the pH and put x in for here, and it'll do all the math for you. The way I'd rearrange this using algebra is I would first multiply both sides by negative 1. And then to remove log, I need to do the anti-log, which is 10 to the x. So 10 to the negative pH is equal to the hydronium ion concentration. So for this problem, the hydronium ion concentration is equal to 10 to the minus 
Yes, your calculator is fine with decimals in the exponent. So you could do 10 and the caret to minus 8.37, or you also have an anti-log button, 10 to the x. So I'm just going to press that button and negative 8.37, enter, and I'm going to get 4.2658 times 10 to the negative 9. Just writing down plenty of numbers. How many sig figs should it have? Three. Not three. Two. Two. This is a logarithm. The, the decimal places are the only significant ones. So this should have two. 4.3 times 10 to the minus 9. Questions? So we can also talk about a POH scale. POH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So that's down here, and what we notice is that they are opposite of each other. Acidic solutions have a pH of zero at the extreme and a pOH of 14. And this goes down to zero over here and 14 up there. If you take any of these places and add them together, let's just choose this one, 10 plus four 14. I'll show you in a minute why that works. So P is a mathematical operator that they probably didn't teach about in math class. But it stands for negative log of. So POH, negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. We can also talk about PKA. It's the negative log of Ka. We can do this with anything. So P of x is negative log of x. So derive the relationship between pH and pOH. Well, we have an equation for pH. And we have an equation that relates hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations. Oops. And we know that that is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Well, what could we do here? We could solve this for H3O plus and plug it in there. There's other ways you could do it. H3O plus would be Kw divided by hydroxide ion concentration. So I'm going to take this and put it in for the H3O plus. So pH is equal to the negative log of Kw over hydroxide ion concentration. Sometimes things get messier before they get more simple. If we take the log of numbers that are divided, that's the same as t subtracting the logs. So we could write this as pH is equal to negative log of Kw minus negative log of, no, let's not do it that way. 
minus pesky minus sinus, right? Let's just put this on the outside. This part is log of kw minus log of oh minus. Does anything in there look like POH? POH is the negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. Does that look like the negative log of hydroxide ion concentration? So pH equals negative log of Kw plus pOH. I think something's going wrong here. Whoops, that's really wrong. Come back to me. I'm not sure what I did, but this is not looking looking good. Um, my negative signs aren't, aren't coming out correctly. But it's, it's negative times. We took this piece as POH. It included the negative sign. And so that's adding negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. I'm not sure. So, because I know what it's supposed to get to, right? So, let's back up a minute. pH is equal to... Oh. It was fine. It was fine. I had a brain fart. Let's just... It's fine. I was inventing trouble. So then um, we add POH to both sides. We get POH plus, pH plus POH is the negative log of KW. What's the negative log of KW? PKA. pH plus POH equals PKA. The negative log of one times 10 to the minus 14 is what? When, when the coefficient here is one, the negative, lo the log of this number is just this exponent. So the negative log of one times 10 to the minus 14 is minus one times negative 14 or positive 14. Yesterday, it went much better. I don't know. And I don't even have a place left to really write it. Um, so I'll pull this trip. And 
make some room. pH plus pOH equals 14. You do not know, need to know how to derive that. Questions? And now we get to the circle of light, the circle of pH. Anybody else have the Lion King theme song in their head right now? One of these years I'm going to get around to actually putting the soundtrack in here so it plays when I open up this slide. That'd be awesome. So, <coughs> we've talked about four different things that we can measure. So one of them was pH, and one of them was hydronium ion concentration, and one was hydroxide ion concentration, and one was pOH. These are all connected to each other in what I call the circle of pH. How are these things related? Well, we've looked at the equations now that relate all of them. We just had fun deriving this one. pH plus pOH equals 14. Here, the relationship between pH and hydronium ion concentration, the pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. What if we have the pH and we want to find the hydronium ion concentration? We use the rearranged form, H3O plus is equal to 10 to the negative pH. What's the relationship between hydronium and hydroxide ion concentration? It's KW. Rearrange it one way to go one way, rearrange it the other way to go the other way. We didn't talk about the relationship between pOH and OH minus very much. The equations are the same as these, just it's OH instead of H. pOH is negative log, hydroxide ion concentration, and hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative pOH. I present to you the circle of pH. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, I think it ain't equal to pH plus pOH. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh, I derived it. So, um, so what we're looking at there, um, the KW was the equilibrium constant for the um, reaction, right? Yeah. Auto ionization. So that's mm -hmm. 10 to the minus 14. And so PKW is the negative log of that, which is 14. So when, when you have logarithms, multiplying is adding, and dividing is subtracting. So another way to think about this, um, so we've got, we've got this guy right here, yeah? Let's take the log of both sides. The log 
of these two multiplied is the log of the first one plus the log of the second one. And that's going to equal the log of kW. And what if we multiply everything by negative 1? Make that a negative. Make this a negative. This, this would have been much faster. Well, what's this? That's pH. And what's this? POH. And what's this? PKW. Oh, did I do that on the slide before? That was that was a mistake. So I I I can't go back to previous writing, but if I wrote P K A, I meant K W. I'm sorry about that. That would be confusing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that caused me to think about it again. And this is a much faster way of deriving that relationship. <laughs> Any other questions? I think this is the last one. <coughs> so as the pH of the solution increases, the number gets larger, what happens to the acidity? It decreases. And I circled, this is definitely time for me to stop here because I circled the wrong one. The acidity decreases when the pH increases. Okay. <laughs>